Okay, so this is my Raspberry Pi case from DeSalvo Systems. And uh, Tony from DeSalvo Systems contacted me and said, would I like to try one? And uh, I said I definitely would. And uh, it took a while to get here. Uh, it was supposed to be three to five days, but uh, obviously with the current situation in the world, it's, uh, it's taken quite a lot longer, um, but I'm sure that will sort itself out in time. Uh, I'm gonna take my original Raspberry Pi 4 out of this case, which has been in here for nearly a year now, uh, with a Pimeroni fan shim, uh, which is pretty quiet, um, but it's not as quiet as silent, which is what this will be. So it comes with a, an Allen key, and you've got some rubber feet and some thermal paste. This is a piece of thermal interface material, which is only used on the two gig model. So I won't be using that because I haven't got any two gig models. Okay, so here's how it looks inside. So you can see Raspberry Pi 4, and there's a serial number and a revision number. And you can see these three heat sinks, super solid, but these are nice and thin. So it looks like all the connections are gonna be nice and accessible. So the base part just looks like that. That's also got the same sort of uh, stamping in it and that really nice looking Raspberry Pi logo on the back there. Uh, and you can see there's, there's four gaps here, which is for the rubber feet. Uh, so you need to apply the little rubber feet because if you're gonna put that onto a, like wood or something like that, then it's gonna scratch it. So uh, I'll do that as well, but they obviously keep it off for shipping. It just looks, it just looks so nice. So I need to take this out So I've put the four rubber feet on. So it says to put the pie on the lower part of the housing. So there's the USB sockets. Yeah, that fits nicely. And then we put in these little, four little tiny screws. And obviously I can use it like this. So if I pop the lid on, obviously that's how it works with passive cooling. But if I wanted to, uh, I could always just put the Pimeroni fan chim on and leave it working open like that but obviously that's not really the design of this case so I am going to put the lid on. Okay and this is the thermal paste bit and we're going to put the thermal paste on these risers. So you can see here that these aluminium blocks are the bits that connect to the pie. They're the bits that take the heat away so the heat rises up and dissipates through this. Uh, so as a result of that that's why you get this heat warning that this the top of this will get uh, as hot as the CPU eventually, obviously, because all the heat is going through it. So let's put the thermal paste on these three bits. And you only need a tiny amount, it says, and spread it around evenly. And then pop it straight down on top. So then it says, take the top off to check that it's made full contact with the components. Doesn't want to come apart now. So, oh, it could, so it could be better on the, uh, the central one, which I think is the RAM one. Uh, so let's put a little bit more on there. That's worth doing. I think I'll put a tiny bit more on the CPU one as well. I suppose I could put some, could spread that out. There you go, so now if I pick up the Pi, it just feels like a solid object. Uh, there's no movement there at all. Uh, and that, that is really nice, that, that feels very reassuring. Uh, it does say about having to use tweezers for the SD card, which is, uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to get a pair of tweezers, I think. Uh, let's pop one in anyway. The only thing about that is if you regularly change your SD card. Yeah, so it's, oh no, I reckon I could probably get that out. I, I cut my nails yesterday, so let's see if, well, that is fiddly. So I probably won't use this on my regular testing pie. So I am going to need to get some tweezers because I can't get that out with my hands. But, uh, but that's all right for now because uh, I'm going to do some testing uh, with Raspberry Pi OS. Okay, so I'm running Raspberry Pi 32-bit OS um, because uh, it's the most stable version. I've also got the temperature at the top here. Uh, and I've been playing this FIFA video of mine for over an hour, one hour and one minute. And it's never gone above sort of uh, 57 I would say, and it rarely gets to that level. It's just because I've been doing all sorts of extra searching. So I've been searching through web pages and having a look. Uh, I've been transferring things. I've been installing games and emulators. And uh, so for instance, talks here, which I can put on. Uh, if I, let's just, I'm gonna leave FIFA playing. Just gonna mute it. And then I'll start that talks game. 
but it does seem to be doing a really good job. Okay, so now it's running full screen. Let's just go into a quick race. So as I say, FIFA's running in the background while I'm doing this, just, just to give it a bit of a test. Which is a bit jerky. It could do with overclocking, which I'll do in a minute. Let's get rid of that mouse pointer. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'll just play it for a few minutes just to test it. I'm well behind. <laughs> okay, so that'll probably do for that. Let's quit out of that and have a quick look at the temperature. Okay, so the last bit of my video uh, cut out recording, and I hadn't realized it does it sometimes when it switches between recording modes. Since then, I have overclocked, so I'm now running at 2 gigahertz, uh, which is, so it was at 1500, which is stock. Uh, so it's now 2 gigahertz with an over voltage of 6 and a GPU frequency of 750. Uh, I have had this running FIFA videos, uh, or my FIFA video, I just paused it then, uh, for ages now. So I just left it on while I was doing stuff around the house and had lunch and all sorts of things. So if I refresh this, uh, it has been running for three hours and eight minutes with this overclock, continuously running this video. I've been doing stuff to it. I've been uh, adding programs. I've been searching the internet. I've got, you can see I've got two tabs open. I was searching this Torx game because uh, I had a real problem with the camera. So I've, I've done loads of the car racing game and, and really hammered it on that. And I could do stress tests, but I, for me, this is, this is more how I use it. I watch video, I download things. I, I wanted to do it in normal use and not just do a, a sort of structured test for a short amount of time. I wanted to leave it on, I wanted to play with it, I wanted to use it as a normal computer and see how I could rely on it. 58 degrees is perfectly acceptable uh, for this purpose. So, uh, and I might go to 2147 at a later time uh, just to see how well it copes with that because it's been coping with this absolutely fine. So let's launch Torx and have a go with that, with the overclock. Okay, so back in. Oh, I've got a different car. Actually, this car's not as fast as the others, I think. So they're probably gonna leave me behind. Oh, the handling is just so unforgiving. And there's something, I've been playing around with the controls, trying to make it work. Um, but I, everything I do, uh, it seems to be over sensitive. And I was using a PlayStation 3 controller, but it seems to not be uh, accepting it now. Oh. <laughs> anyway, you can see it looks smoother. Uh, it definitely plays better than it did. So let's uh, play that for a bit. I'm going to do uh, basically just race around the track, let it let it go for quite some time, uh, and just to see if I can heat it up more. As I say, the FIFA video is playing in the background, and I've just crashed into a carbon fiber barrier. Expensive. And I found you've got you've got all sorts of things like off-road. <laughs> it's so so sensitive. See, I'm literally if I tap, tiny taps, does as much steering as that. And I have had this definitely working better than this um, from a configuration point of view. Oh, that could have gone worse. Okay, so let's quit out of that and go straight into screen capture. Okay, so I've just quit out of talks and uh, the temperature is 58 degrees. Uh, it generally goes between about 56 and 58 and it seems to stay stable at that depending on uh, what I'm doing. Uh, but I've been installing things, uninstalling, playing around with things, web searches, watching video. FIFA has been playing constantly throughout um, and, uh, and it hasn't been an issue at all. So I'm really pleased with it. Let's cut out to have a look at the case again. Okay, so still running, and uh, if we zoom into the case, uh, just give my final thoughts, really. Um, so if you like to see the lights, you can't really see the lights. You can just about see the red light um, when you plug it in, but you can't see the green disc access light from any angle. It doesn't seem to be uh, apparent. So I love the connectivity. Um, the fact that everything feels more solid and more accessible than uh, any of the other cases. The only caveat to that is the SD card slot. But actually that SD card slot, if you get your nail in uh, and catch the edge, you can flip out the SD card. 
uh, and the secret is to this little edge there's a little lip there uh, and that lip if you get your nail on that lip, you can tug the card out and, and it actually it's fine. So I struggled with it before, but you don't need tweezers. Uh, the only other thing is, uh, is the note that you get in the case. Uh, and it's true, it does get hot. So uh, it feels not quite as hot as a kettle, but when a kettle's boiled, you would sort of tap it with your hand to know that it's boiled. Now, this is uh, so 57 degrees at the moment, and you can touch it, and you can move it, and you can unplug things and things like that, but you wouldn't want to leave your hand on it, uh, and you wouldn't want to leave it somewhere that little kids have got access to it. So if you've got very young children, you need to keep it up on a shelf or somewhere out the way. Um, but uh, other than that, it is, it's a stunning case. Uh, I love the look of it. The build quality is amazing. It's from a single block of aluminium, uh, and it is super solid but it's also really elegant, it, you know, it is a piece of artwork and that Raspberry Pi logo etched on the bottom is, is just great. So I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.